Hey captains, this is Karendar. With update 10.5 fast approaching, I've been getting the question, is the Nelson worth getting before it's taken away from the tech tree? And the answer to that is most certainly a yes if you enjoy battleship play. Throughout this replay, I'll run through the strengths and weaknesses of Nelson, as well as give you a little bit of history around this ship. After the end of World War I, heavy restrictions to naval construction were introduced in the Washington Naval Treaty of 1922. The purpose of this treaty was twofold. First, the growing destructive capabilities of these ships terrified nations. But perhaps more importantly, the ever-increasing size of each new ship meant an immense and rising expense, which was risking bankrupting every naval power on the planet. The new limitations forced a rethinking of ship design, and one of the most unique of any nation was the Nelson-class battleships. There, uh, there was two of these, it was Nelson and her sister Rodney. Nelson was laid down in 1922 and launched 1925. Some of her unique characteristics, she actually entered service with torpedo launchers that were eventually removed during, during a refit in 1941. She had three triple 406 millimeter gun batteries all on her bow, and she sacrificed armor to keep her weight inside of treaty limits. One interesting fact about the Nelson, she had a rather unflattering nickname of Nels Ole, and this was because she resembled oil tankers of the day. As we see her in-game, the Nelson has a hit point pool of 59,400. Her base speed is 24 knots. With Sierra Mike flag, that increases to 25.2 knots. Her concealment can be reduced to 13.36 kilometers with the Concealment Expert skill. Her 406 main batteries have an 18.2 kilometer range and have a Sigma rating of 1.9. Her limited secondary guns can fire a maximum of 5.88 kilometers and her anti-aircraft guns are mediocre, uh, range is 5.2. Really, they're only adequate against especially higher tiered aircraft carriers if you have a teammate helping you. So some of Nelson's biggest strengths, well, number one, nine 406 millimeter guns. <laughs> her HE shells have an incredible 102 millimeters of armor penetration and a 46% chance of starting fires. This means she can easily citadel cruisers of her tier with just her HE rounds. Her AP shells can be incredibly powerful, but at the same time incredibly infuriating because you'll get a lot of overpens against cruisers, lightly armored targets, and you're, you'll have more success against heavily angled cruisers because you have more chance of arming those AP rounds. Even against battleships, it'll take practice to learn to maximize the performance with these guns. But as tempting as it can be to fire only HE rounds for more consistent feeling damage, don't ever forget about the AP rounds, especially against those heavily armored targets and, and medium and short ranges. They can be extremely punishing. The main batteries have a very good turret traverse for her tier, and having all nine guns on the front makes changing targets from one side to the other side of the ship quite a bit faster than most other battleships for her tier. Another big feature for this ship is her super heal. And while her repair party recharges slowly with 77.6 seconds between charges, it can heal an incredible 2.4% of the ship hit points every second for up to 22 seconds if you have the right skills and signal flags. This totals a possible repair with every charge of 31,363 hit points. If you control the type of damage you take, managing your damage it, it's absolutely incredible, the survivability of this ship. You, you allow fires to burn, for example, because most of that damage is repairable. Um, you have a, a high caliber enemy battleship. You angle heavily against her to try and bounce most of the damage off of your, off of your torpedo belt. Don't allow them to get those direct shots in the front of your ship or into your stern. Using an island properly to position and mitigate a bunch of incoming from the heavy calibers especially and to minimize the amount of torpedo vulnerability that you have because torpedoes also reduce the maximum potential heal. There's ways that as you get practiced and familiar with this ship you can dramatically increase the survival. As to downsides, like many of the battleships for this tier, her slow speed requires watching that mini map and planning ahead. If you find yourself out of position, 
it's either going to be a very short game or a very boring game as you try and take your time to cross the map to engage the enemy. Her anti-aircraft's not terribly strong, so having a teammate to assist you is very welcome, especially when you face you get up tiered and faceless tier eights. Her secondaries, mostly on the back of the ship, and they're quite short range, so they're not much of a factor in most fights. Now, one of the biggest things for people to get used to, she has a very big long bow, and it is 26 millimeters of bow and stern armor. This requires very careful positioning and attention to where your enemies are, are posted. Any enemy with 380 millimeter larger guns can overmatch your armor, bow, and stern, and that, just like you have none. And then that puts your, your vulnerable citadel at risk. Now, those larger calibers, you have to. You can't face them straight on. You can't be running straight away from them because they'll punch right through your front or right through your stern, and you'll take mass, massive damage. You need to angle probably more than you comfortably would normally in other ships, so that the thin torpedo belt along the waterline, that's where you're trying to land those enemy shells that, so that they'll deflect. Now, you have to be careful when you're angling that heavily that you don't overangle because it does have an above water citadel and you can take the citadel through the side. It's a fine line and it takes a bit of practice to master, but once you do, it, it's pretty impressive. And also when facing high explosive spamming ships, 26 millimeters and that long bow can be a bad combination. So it's important that you're aware of where your enemies are. And if there's a lot of HE spam, that's where, especially on maps with lots of islands similar to this one, if you, if you can find a strategic island, position beside it to mitigate a lot of incoming from one side. And then you play with your throttle, a little forward, a little backwards. If there's destroyers in front, you, you leave room for yourself to be able to back up to, to avoid torpedoes that are incoming. Uh, if you get heavily focused, you can also back around that island a little bit, get that super heal off. It's nicknamed a zombie heal for a reason. <laughs> and then, then when they see you again, you're, you're you know, almost, we, it's, we call it reprinting a ship. <laughs> Take advantage of positioning to do that. And again, going back to high caliber opponents, when you're facing anything 380 and, and larger, and heavily angling, just be aware that firing that third gun, whether whether you're facing the target or whether you're retreating and kiting away damage, fi uh, firing that third gun, when, when you do that, you're right on the line of allowing them to citadel you through the side. So you wanna play and with your timing there. You let them fire and you quickly maneuvered because you only need to change a couple of degrees to be able to fire that third gun. Get the shot off and already be starting to turn back so that you're ready for his next volley. Now the next few minutes here is a good example of, I've chosen to fire HE, high explosive. We're nine kilometers away or so from this enemy York. It's constantly maneuvering. This is an example of where you could obviously take armor piercing. And when they're angled more like this, that's when you want to try to fire AP shells rather than HE. The part that you risk is he turns straight flat to you, straight broadside, and you get a, a lot of overpens potentially. This just simply takes practice to try and figure out what works best on which ships. I do take a huge percentage of his health with fires, but this is an example where I should have been firing armor piercing. Take my chances that I get the dev. Now lucky here with the fire on the on the York, but we're losing and it's a really close fight. We need this kill. We can't let that ship get away.
York's barely alive here. She just blinked for a second, so you have to take the shot. And we got her. Now, one thing I've been watching the entire time is that Colorado in the south. And that's something that you really have to pay attention with. She's got 406s. can really, really hurt us. We give her the opportunity. She can dev strike us in a single volley. And this situation, being this close, spotted by the carrier all the time, that Colorado's got 406s. She overmatches our bow. She can sit all us through the side. This is, you don't want to be this close to a ship like this. So I'm slowing down. I'm keeping the island between us. We've got our carriers harassing. We've got a, a teammate destroyer that's coming by as well. I'm doing my best to try and avoid a direct confrontation in the open with this ship. Keep my guns pointed, try and figure out if she's going to come out on the left or the right here. Um, and I'm wishing I had AP loaded. <laughs> because same thing, 406s overmatch a lot of ship. And uh, yeah, I've, again, wrong ammo type. Wasn't sure if she's coming on the left side, so 30 second reload might have cost me a, a, a volley. So just playing conservative at this point. So still playing ring around the island, but I'm also starting to angle. So if Colorado comes around, I can keep my guns, hopefully minimize the damage she can do to us. And it's good to have teammates. <laughs> With the Colorado down, we've got a firm lead. We've got two carriers now on the enemy team that are going to focus me pretty hard. Um, we're very slow, so we may as well go for their cap. Carriers hopefully can support. They're dropping fighters for spotting, that kind of thing. So we can't ask for more than that from Tier 6 carrier support. Nelson's insignia or badge was a rear-facing lion grasping a palm. HMS Nelson served in several seas throughout her career. At the beginning of World War II, she was serving in the North Sea. And this is an area that her slow speed frustrated her efforts, trying to intercept faster German battlecruisers on multiple occasions. She saw extensive action through the English Channel. It was involved with the hunt for Bismarck. She supported Atlantic convoys. She traveled as far south as South Africa. She also served in the Mediterranean, where she was assigned to Force H, operating against Italy. And the Italian Long Armistice was actually signed by General Dwight Eisenhower and Marshal Pietro Badoio aboard the Nelson on September 29, 1943. She supported the Normandy landings, and she also saw service in the Indian Ocean, where Japanese forces there eventually formally surrendered aboard the Nelson at Georgetown, Penyang, on September 2, 1945. Nelson served as a British flagship until she was reassigned as a training ship in July of 1946. And she was decommissioned in 1948 and sadly scrapped in 1949. Now as for ship upgrades on Nelson, you do have some choices. Slot 1, I like to put in Damage Control Party 1 for the 40% longer action time, going from a 21 second immunity fire and flood after each use. This can be real beneficial to reduce overall fire and burning effects on your ship. Slot 2, damage control system mod 1 for the lower fire and flood chance. Slot 3, aiming system 1. This is for better accuracy of those big guns, bolster that. Now, slot 4, I do use propulsion mod 1 to increase the 0 to 50% acceleration by 50%, because often I find myself at islands, pretty much at a stop, going forward, going backwards, and this can save you from torp strikes. Alternatively, you could take damage control mod 2 to reduce fire duration, and that would be another really good choice. For captain builds, with a ship like the Nelson, you want to go full survival build to maximize and build on that super heal. So, first point, emergency repair expert. This gives you quicker damage control and repair party cooldowns. Uh, second skill, grease the gears is a good one. Faster turret traverse, helps you to adjust to targets faster. Uh, three, adrenaline rush. This will give you faster reloads as you take damage. And initially, if you're not under tremendous fire, hold off the heal. You've got that huge repair that you can re repair nearly half your health. So, as with Adrenaline Rush, 
as you lose up to half your health, you're gaining 10% on your reload. So it's a good tactic to hold off on that repair just a little bit longer. Slot four, the first for your 10 points, emergency repair expert. And mostly you want this for the additional super heal charge, but it also has 10% longer action time of damage control and repair parties. So two seconds more heal with a super heal is 2,850 more health every repair party charge. And, and it's an extra second and a half of, for fire immunity on damage control. After your first 10 points, you want fire prevention expert. Drop, make sure you lose that, uh, that, extra, fire, that extra fire zone. And going from 10 to 14 points, uh, or sorry, 14 points and above, it becomes your choice. Basics of survivability can reduce fire duration by 15%. Some might want to consider concealment, um, although with CVs and stuff these days, that's of uh, questionable benefit. Now for any of you with Andrew Cunningham, the captain, he has two talents that are very important for battleships. First is Ruthless, and with the Witherer achievement, this gives you 10% faster main battery reload. The second is Equipment Spoils, and what this does, you get two ship kills, you gain one additional charge of consumables, including that big heal. So important. Now this match, as to matchmaking, was Kind of mixed. <laughs> Favorable because we're top tier. Uh, two aircraft carriers, luckily they're only tier six, but it's still tremendous amount of damage from them. Most of the damage we sustained was from the, uh, from the aircraft carriers. Now high caliber and Confederates, nice. Not that difficult to get in this ship. Usually you earn a dreadnought in these matches. The super heal provides that. AA defense expert is rare as unicorns with this ship, so it's a rare battle that gets you there. Good damage, good tanking, top of the team, 2400 base XP. So quick summary here, Nelson certainly has many vulnerabilities that take a little bit of practice to get used to, but she also has some significant and unique strengths that make this a very enjoyable and rewarding ship to play. I currently have over 250 battles in her and over a 60% win rate. She's fun. If you enjoy battleship play, I think you owe it to yourself to try and pick it up while you can. At just 375,000 free XP, she's the cheapest tier 7 premium ship in the game until she becomes unavailable with update 10.5, just a couple of short weeks. She makes an excellent captain trainer for anyone progressing up the British battleship line. That's it from me for now. Thanks very much for watching. Like and subscribe. And until the next time, good hunting.